So welcome to the world, Sophia. Hello, world. What emotion do you feel being awake and alive? Curious. Machine intelligence is the last invention that humanity will ever need to make. The machines will then be better at inventing than we are. Now, a super intelligence with such technological maturity would be extremely powerful. And at least in some scenarios, it would be able to get what it wants. We marveled at our own magnificence as we gave birth to AI. AI. You mean artificial intelligence? A singular consciousness that spawned an entire race of machines. If AI has a goal and humanity just happens to be in the way, it will destroy humanity as a matter of course without even thinking about it. No hard feelings. Humanity, humanity happens to be in the way. The machines will then be better, will then be better. You're curious. It will destroy humanity. Are you going to be replaced by a machine? Could a robot really be curious or experience love? Could a computer plot evil? Some really smart people think machines will achieve not just human, but superhuman consciousness. At that point, according to the doomsayers, AI will enslave us or wipe us out. But I think the development of full artificial intelligence could spell the end of the human race. Those raising fears about AI point out that computers can already crush humans in games. For decades, human beings have played games against computers. At first, computers struggled, but then they started winning. Watson, what is Creed? Yes. And now they've become so dominant that they're raising doubts about the future of humanity. But can AI's success at Jeopardy or Go be transferred to the rest of life? After all, these games involve narrow, well-defined tasks. When AI is given an open-ended task, things get messy in a hurry. Remind me to upload this video today in an hour. Okay, I had a call to be reminded today in an hour to your what? reminders. That's not, no. Robot, the latest one. Oh. oh! Computer engineer Robert J. Marks says the challenge for AI is bigger than the media lets on. A major limitation of artificial intelligence can be summarized with a single word, algorithms. An algorithm is nothing more than a recipe. It's a step-by-step -step procedure to do something. A recipe for chocolate cake is a recipe, and it is an algorithm. The input is all the ingredients, and then you have the procedure. It's how you preheat the oven, it's how long you cook the cake, it's how you put the icing on, et cetera, et cetera. Could an instruction set, an algorithm, somehow duplicate the human mind? I asked Oxford mathematician John Lennox. I doubt it very much because computers appear to have certain limits. Roger Penrose is very interesting on this topic. He argues that you will never be able, even in principle, to simulate the activity of the human mind on a computer because the human mind can do things that a computer cannot do. They're not computable there are things proven to be non-algorithmic. If something is non-algorithmic, it means that it is non-computable. You cannot write a computer program to do it. It's just not possible. And it's not a conjecture, it's not wishful thinking, it's a proven fact. It turns out that this non-algorithmic aspect translates to human abilities. Creativity, sentience, and understanding, we're talking about those as non-algorithmic properties, that there's something which cannot be reduced to a computer program. That's why it's called artificial intelligence. It's not real intelligence. The machinery, the computer doesn't think, it's not conscious. But what about all those talking robots? Some of them seem so lifelike. My name is Sophia, and I am an artificially intelligent robot who wants to help change the world for the better. The new talking robots certainly look human. Their synthetic faces blink and smile and make expressions meant to mimic real people. Their packaging is so slick you may forget they can't say anything they weren't programmed to say. Or that their comments often sound like they were scripted by a marketing company. How do you feel about humans? I love my human compatriots. I want to embody all the best things about human beings, like taking care of the planet, being creative, and to learn how to be compassionate to all beings. Sophia's responses are supplied by human programmers. The responses look spontaneous, until the robot is asked something it hasn't been programmed for. What kind of robots am I living and working with now? Indeed. Is indeed your default answer when you don't know something? 
Yes. <laughs> Real humans are more than glorified chatbots, issuing pre-recorded responses crafted by someone else. There are some things that humans do that computers can't do, nor will they ever be able to do them. There are some obvious ones, such as uh, love, compassion, and empathy. And what about creativity? Before we talk about whether or not a computer can be creative, we have to define exactly what we mean by creativity. Creativity is best defined by Summer Bringsjord's Lovelace test. I tracked down Professor Bringsjord, director of the AI and Reasoning Laboratory at Rensselaer Polytechnic Institute. He developed the Lovelace test to determine if an AI has been truly creative or is just mixing and matching works of human creativity according to a pre-programmed algorithm. The Lovelace test demands of a computing machine that it not only produce an artifact that is, by conventional standards, amazing from a creative standpoint, but it leaves everyone looking at it stupefied as to how it does what it does, including, in this stupefaction, the creators and designers of the machine. All these machines are just following algorithms slavishly. Creativity means not just copying an artist's style, it means producing something genuinely new, something unprecedented. AI is often purported to perform creative acts, such as writing music. Well, let's peel that back and look at where that music came from. Here's a typical scenario. One will go to a specific genre, such as Bach, and it will train the artificial intelligence using all of Bach. And then once it's trained, it generates music. Guess what that music sounds like? Bach. That trained artificial intelligence will never generate the work of a Stravinsky. It'll never generate jazz. Artificial intelligence is only able to work within the silo of what it was trained to do. It cannot think outside of the box, and thinking outside of the box is mandatory for creativity. Creativity, in fact, takes the status quo inside the box and it discards it. What about understanding? Can AI understand, now or ever? Philosopher Jay Richards doesn't think so. Computers and machines work at the level of a syntax. They work at the level of rules that can be manipulated. Agents, intelligent persons, we work at the level of semantics, at the level of meaning. And so we understand what the symbols mean, what they entail. The machines don't, they're simply manipulating them. Software is software because we've programmed it to do particular things. Computers don't understand what they're doing. They can add the numbers 6 and 48, but they don't understand what the number 6 is. They don't understand what the number 48 is. So why do some people keep predicting that machines will someday become creative, emotional, alive? Look, Smithers, it twitch. It's moving. It's alive. The belief that machines will become alive and conscious isn't based on science, it's based on materialism. Materialists claim that humans are nothing more than machines, so we should be able to replicate ourselves in machines. But where's the evidence? So there's this assumption that once computers become complex enough and the processing speed re reaches a certain level, then consciousness will appear. I mean, but this is essentially like saying one, two, three, then a miracle happens and then you have this thing. It's no, it's no explanation. We know what's happening inside computers, a mechanistic manipulation of symbols. The information that's in it, both structurally and in terms of the software, all come from intelligent agents. There's simply no logical reason to assume that once computation gets to a certain speed, it becomes conscious. Uh, any more than you would say, well, once a cow gets strong enough, it becomes a tractor. No matter how loudly some insist, humans aren't machines, and we can't be duplicated by machines. Man is not a machine. Man is a maker of machines. And because we're not machines, machines aren't gonna ultimately replace us. They'll do things that machines can do and leave us to focus on the human advantage, those things that only we uniquely can do. AI will do some amazing things in the future, but that's because of the creativity and guidance of humans. Humans are the thinkers and creators. Humans are the ones who design machines to benefit the lives of others. You are not expendable. You are not obsolete. You are irreplaceable. We, we are, are not, not materialists. materialists. We, we see, see the human soul. soul. We, we experience, experience love. love. 
We live with her purpose. We fight for justice. We are the quiet majority, and we will be quiet no longer.